Well, good morning, everybody. Morning. Well, I'm going to get started. I don't know, when I was a young kid, my friend Nate told me that asking a lot of questions would make you smarter. So in my brain, that made me ask a lot of questions. When, what, where, and why? I asked a lot of questions. Mom, where are we going? What are we doing? And I don't know if any of us are curious people. We might be or we might not be. Maybe we just ask a lot of questions. But in the Bible, in the book of James, James is asking a lot of questions. And he's asking these questions to get us to see something. And I'm going to read out of James 4. And in this section of the Bible, there are 10 verses. There are six questions in those 10 verses. And I'm going to read two of them today. What is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Don't they come from the evil desires that wage war within you? There was two questions right there. You want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it, so you fight and wage war to take it from them. Yet you don't have what you want. No, and even when you ask God for it, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. And what James is doing here is he's asking these questions to get us to question our motives. And I want to go back to the first two questions. He says, what is causing the quarrels and fights among you? And then, get this, James goes back and answers his question with a question. <laughs> he says, don't they come from the evil desires that wage war within you? And what James is understanding here, and he's trying to get us to understand by asking these questions is that evil and selfish motives can lead to quarrels, tension, and even greater selfishness. And guys, I don't know about you, but I can see some quarrels and tension in our world right now. Guys, I can't even vote, but man, I can see the tension there. And James understood that evil motives led to quarrels and tension. And guys, I want to show you something very powerful, but to do that, we have to turn to John chapter 17. And in this passage, you get a glimpse of Jesus right before he goes to the cross, praying for his disciples. And out of all the things that Jesus could pray, he prays for this thing. Let me read. Now I am departing from the world. They are staying in this world. I am coming to you, Holy Father. You have given me your name. Now protect them by the power of your name so that they will be united just as we are. And now, out of all the things that Jesus could pray at this moment before he goes to the cross, he prays that they will be what? United, one. He doesn't pray that they would have nice cars and that they would live long lives. He prays that they would be united. And when we are not united because of our motives, that's not God's plan. And when we are not united because of our motives, it makes the devil's job very easy. And like, guys, I was talking to my dad last night about there's this fish that they live in large groups together to swarm off predators because they have power in numbers. But when there's one, they get eaten by the predators. But when they're all together... They're strong in numbers as a group when they're working as a group. Because when we're united, that's God's plan. And, and James goes on in verse 3. He says, and even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. And what James is noticing here is that sometimes we become all we want is pleasure, and we don't want the presence of God. And sometimes we become pleasure-seeking and not presence-seeking. Sometimes we want pleasure so badly that we lose sight of the presence. Sometimes our motives can blind us. And guys, how, how are your motives? James is trying to get us to see through these questions, to question our motives, because if our motives are wrong, we have quarrels tension and that's not God's plan for us we need to check our motives and I have three things that can help us check our motives number one you need to ask the right questions 
to get the right motives. Number two, do you have quarrels and tension and selfishness in your life? That could also mean that your motives are wrong. And number three, ask another believer. Say, hey, are my motives right? Are my motives pure? Because, guys, if we can get our motives right, then quarrels and tension in our world will leave. If we can get our motives right, that's God's plan. If we can be united, we can swarm off the predator. Because, guys, we need to be united. We need to have good motives so we can receive what God has for us. And, guys, what James in the Bible, and I'm trying to get us to see here, is that motives matter. Let's pray. Lord, we pray, Lord, that if our motives are wrong today, Lord, you would help us ask the right questions, Lord, that our motives would be pure again, that our motives would be right. Lord, I ask that we would be united as a church, as a country, Lord. I ask that we would be united. Lord, I ask that we would be united so we can fend off evil attacks, Lord. Lord, would you help us today, Lord? In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, so we're going to go into some personal prayer time, and then I'll bring us back, and we'll do some corporate prayer. Thank you, guys.